Hello guys and welcome to another video. Today is gonna be a guide video about Unholy DK. First of all, uh, I'm gonna talk about everything fastly. So I'm gonna talk about stat priority, a bit about the talents and rotation. So first of all, gearing and stats. As an Unholy Dead Knight and usually you know that I'm always going for a global cooldown between 121 and 123. This is what I personally like, so at least 123 global cooldown or less, don't overdo it. For me 123 is the sweet spot and of course we get even 5% haste when we use our defile as you see so we get even 1.16 when we are in our defile because of the unholy ground talent. So your priority is to get so much haste that you have at least 1.23 global cooldown. So after we have so much haste uh, we are getting from 15 to 20% worse. I'm personally probably going for 20% at least and then we go full on mastery stacking why is mastery better than versatility now if you want both damage increase healing done and take a bit less damage then you can stack versatility if you want flat more damage just then you have to go mastery mastery is gonna give you more damage than versatility as you see for 6637 we are already getting a 17 percent and look how much here we have 11622 and we are only getting close to 15 percent so with mastery you can get more damage gem that i'm using the the gem that's like a meta gem now enduring bloodstone so this grants you five percent damage reduction for six seconds if you're stunned feared whatever cc'd regarding gearing I'm getting the legs and the head to get the two set bonus. I'm not going for the four set bonus. Gems doesn't really matter. As I said, I told you what's the priority regarding stats. Now I'm, I'm having haste mastery one ring, haste verse other ring, and the neck haste verse. Embellishment, I'm using this one, which actually causes damage to the enemy. Now elemental focusing lens, this actually procs from your dots as well. So it's a nice bonus damage. Once you stack up like your strength buff and everything, this is dealing even 400k plus damage. Leech or movement speed. Right now I am more focused on leech. There's a possibility that I'm gonna switch the boots and the wrist to movement speed and keep the back enchant with the healing when you're out of combat. I find that useful when you're doesn't matter where in the world or inside arena but you probably will always be in combat in arena. For battlegrounds it's still a good choice. Now I know some people go ascendance the other uh, embellishment that gives you some random secondary stat probably versatility mastery haste or crit and it stacks up it's definitely not bad if you're gonna play the disease build i haven't tried it yet but if you're gonna play disease build then you can go for ascendance you can get let's say on the weapon and you got the other embellishment put it on some wrist or boots or well whatever that doubles the effect of the ascendance because it's a Nerubian enchant. Let's get to the talents. So you're always going Rider of the Apocalypse. Sand lane is absolutely useless as an unholy DK. It's weak as hell. I don't know why they don't buff it. At least make it a bruiser like clawing vampiric strike, you know, to hit harder, to make it more viable and not be like disease oriented, but basically, you know, just flat damage on button press. Uh, Riders of the Apocalypse. A horseman's aid now i saw some people use this but i know this has been nerfed by 50 percent in pvp so the shield that they put at 80 percent effectiveness is probably 40 and this effect works only each 45 seconds basically you can get ams from the horseman only each 45 seconds i like to use pact of the apocalypse always 5% damage reduction up to 20% if all horsemen are active. I find that great. You can use this when you're bursting like in the opener. You can basically use your horsemen so that you don't have to waste your own defensives. You can just use the horsemen and you will get less. Maybe you use AMS and that's it. Now Fury of the Horsemen. Every 50 runic power you can get 
one second and up to five seconds. Now one dead core costs 30 runic power so you have to cast two dead cores just to get one second and to get five seconds you have to cast nine dead coils and I honestly don't think that you can maximally utilize this. I like a feast of souls anytime you have two or more horsemen your dead core is gonna deal 20% more damage and if you combine that with sudden doom faster might death rot 2% damage per disease unholy assault that sudden doom you know with doom burst is gonna deal decent damage and if you get two in a row or three that's gonna hurt now as you see i'm playing the clawing build you have this build rotten touch gives you 30 percent damage increase on clawing shadows honestly i like to use this uh, if you want to play the other build the disease build you just change this to plague bringer and take ghoulish frenzy to increase all damage done by five percent regarding left side um nothing much to talk about you know that uh, null magic is only 4% effective and magic effects against you are reduced only by 10%. Ice Prison is actually not so terrible against melee classes which you can root and that they cannot break the root. I personally like to use this against warriors, maybe rogues or demon hunters so I can support if there is a caster with me to some degree but most of the time I like to use gloom ward specifically if there is a priest a disc with me who's gonna use power word shield on me this is gonna increase its absorb effect and it basically increases your AMS as well the shield it's bigger if you have gloom ward this is not so terrible I see people don't use this at all pretty much but against the fury warrior against rogues I mean classes that have two weapons in their hands I honestly think it's not so terrible you can get up to 20% auto attack speed reduction and it lasts 30 seconds so it's not hard to keep it up now suppression and osmosis I see many people use this you can do so if you want no magic osmosis I mean, uh, against casters your AMS is literally getting blown up, so I don't know how much useful this is. I see many people use this, probably because of the dampening, so when you use AMS you get 15% increased healing, but I don't know, in some builds even I'm using this, so this part is really just own preference like what do you want to use do you want to slow two targets with chain of ice do you want to have mind freeze with reduced cooldown if you succeed to interrupt no it's it's really your own preference i personally love to use blood draw because it literally gives me 10 percent additional damage reduction for eight seconds and this actually saves my life plenty of times as you see i'm using here leech as well but if you don't want to go blood sand you can just take runic protection, you don't want this, you can go osmosis, go this way. If you don't want gloom ward, you can go null magic, do whatever you want. Honestly, even I am switching this sometimes out, depending on who I'm facing. Regarding PvP talents, not much to talk about, so necrotic wounds, strangulate, most useful. This is never being changed. Uh, Doom burst, you, can, you don't have to if you don't want to, but I personally like to use it. And we got these two, Bloodforged Armor Spell Warden and Necromancer's Bargain. Now this way, with Necromancer's Bargain, we have 30 second cooldown on Apocalypse. I really love this, specifically, whenever you Apocalypse, you get two runes. And I have Asphyxiate. Of course, it lasts only three seconds in PvP. And Strangulate lasts for four seconds in PvP. And Strangulate doesn't have a global cooldown so you can silence anytime while asphyxiate does have a global cooldown so i love to use strangulate but right now i'm testing a bit with necromancer's bargain because of course this is even dealing eight percent of the toxic maximum health if there is some healing over time or healing spells cast on this target we refresh the duration of crypt fever everybody has more hp so it can be useful probably nothing more to talk about on this part rotation we have some different rotations i would say depending on the situation most of the time of course you're gonna if you're in an arena and even outside like the fastest way you can burst is so chain of ice 
You defile, grip in the healer, blind them, then you transform your pet, call your army, unholy assault, apocalypse. And you can use abomination limb so that you grip them back once you start clawing. Now, priority is of course to use sudden doom immediately, anytime you have, so that you get the buff to the clawing shadows. Always try to keep a balance between your runes and your runic power. Now you can as well try to first use two festering strikes, Apocalypse Unholy Assault, and then if you have Sudden Dooms, burst them, or just go clawing. So once an arena drags on, a good combo I'm gonna show you here. As you see, I Apocalypse, Unholy Assault, and then I use two Sudden Dooms. And I'm getting even more Sudden Dooms. And I'm prioritizing to pop immediately Troll Banes, the Chains of Ice. And we can as well um, use Apocalypse as the last one, because right now it pops even with one Festering Wound. So you can leave that for the end. Anyway, thanks for watching. I know this video is regarding the rotation. I didn't really go too detailed into it because I don't really have time. But hopefully I gave you some information how to really play a DK. Beneath the ice and snow, a legend awakens. I am Arthas, the Lich King ruler of the damned master of Frostmoor.